Good morning, Professor Shabas, and welcome to Yerevan Global Forum. Thank you. You have attended and spoke at previous two global forums as well, and I would like to extend my gratitude, and I'm sure the gratitude of the Armenian public for your unwavering dedication to the genocide prevention agenda. So, yeah. Professor, the first question, you have quite an impressive record of dealing with the issues of human rights protection, including at the international level through your engagement as a practicing lawyer in various tribunals and courts. The genocide is the ultimate crime against the humanity. In your opinion, how adequate the international legal mechanism and instruments are for preventing this horror? Well, we have... Uh a very elaborate, much more elaborate system today than we had, well, certainly 70 years ago when the convention was adopted. Mm -hmm. uh, it continues to expand and to develop within, uh, mainly within the United Nations, but also at the regional level through bodies like the Council of Europe, the European Court of Human Rights, and so on. Um, you know, it's a system that was built really that grew out of the horrors of the Second World War and uh, the tensions of the 1930s. And we, it was built to make sure that doesn't happen again. And I feel right now that we're in a context where that seems threatened, where that, that kind of deterioration of the global political environment that characterized the 80, 80 years ago uh, seems to be threatening us again. And these institutions, the big difference between the present day and 80 years ago is that we have these institutions that have been designed to prevent that and to protect us from that. And this is the test. So we're in it now, and we're going to see how, how they withstand it. But that's what they're there for. Um, we've built them up. We've learned lessons from the past. We have legal tools. We have a, a huge... A body, a, a great deal has been accomplished, uh, but we're we're in the we're in the winter storm now, and we have to see whether the whether whether it's solid enough. So it's ongoing process. <laughs> it is absolutely, and it's constantly being tested, and so we're I think we're, it's being tested now, and so it's all the more uh, it, it underscores the importance of uh, all of the activities, including the global forum, uh, to draw attention to the to the past to the uh, horrors of the past and to the need to prevent recurrence, to see that justice is done when, when atrocities t happen in the past, that the, that the past cannot be denied, and uh, all with a view to making the, 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 the present and the future more secure for all of us. Thank you. Professor, as I know, you were a member of Sierra Leone Truth and Reconciliation Commission, and we in Armenia know only too well how hard it is for some governments and societies to reconcile themselves with their own history. For a real reconciliation between the perpetrators and the victims, how important do you think are the punishment of perpetrators and accountability for inaction? You know, punishment, of course, is, a, is an element of... Um of post-conflict justice, or what we sometimes call transitional yes, justice. justice. There are many components of transitional justice, of, of transitions. Uh, the search for truth, the importance of establishing the truth, um, the um, uh, issue of reparations for victims, and uh, justice in terms of prosecution, criminal justice for the perpetrators is one component. Sometimes it's not possible. Uh, to deliver uh, criminal justice. Uh, sometimes it's simply, sometimes it's, it's, it's not possible politically because of uh, the need for some kind of an amnesty or something in order to be able to achieve uh, a peaceful transition. Sometimes it's not possible, it's the case here in Armenia, uh, because of the time factor, because, uh, because more than 100 years have gone by and there's nobody left alive to be prosecuted, so criminal justice is not um, one or is not viable, so it's yes. not possible. But but there are different op there are different routes, and it's a combination uh, of uh, of factors that has to be uh, have have to be considered. And that it's also something that is dynamic in terms of time. That as time goes by, uh, some things become more important, some things become less important. There's no uh, model, there's no pattern, you know, I was, you mentioned the Sierra Leone where I was on the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. Um, it was set up very, very, very soon after the Civil War in that country. 
But there are some countries that have had two Truth and Reconciliation Commissions. They have one, and then 10 or 15 years later, they discover that they need to do it again. So it's an ongoing process, and, and uh, there's no uh, formula because it's different. Every situation seems to be different. Yes. International recognition and condemnation of the Armenian Genocide has been one of the foreign policy priorities of Armenia since its independence in 1991. However, throughout years, the focus of Armenia's efforts became larger, larger encompassing uh, the global prevention agenda. Armenia has initiated a number of resolutions in the United Nations Human Rights Council and in uh, 2015 led the international efforts to designate December 9 as the, as the International Day of Commemoration and the dignity of the victims of the crime of genocide. Do you think all these decisions gave a momentum to advancing global prevention agenda? Yes, absolutely. Um, the, the commemoration, the, having a date to commemorate the Genocide Convention is a, is a very important step. And the role of Armenia in doing that is very important. I think it's, uh, it's really um, wonderful to see the, the leadership that Armenia has taken, that it's gone beyond its own uh, national uh, tragedy, its own national suffering, and uh, express this as a universal objective. Uh, and uh, it's, it's. I mean, there's no better, there's no better, there's no better country to do it. And uh, it's, but I mean, you didn't have to do it, and it chose to do it. And and I think that's, that's a, that's a great thing. Um, there are, you know, I've been. I think the first time I went to an event commemorating the Genocide Convention was uh, 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. It was the 50th anniversary of the convention. There was a little conference in Paris at an obscure university, and I don't think there was very much uh, beyond that. And then at the 60th anniversary, 10 years ago, there were many different conferences mm -hmm. in parts of the world, but this, it has become richer and richer in terms of the activity. Um, and uh, here we are in the 70th anniversary. So uh, although a lot of people think that genocide is all about history, and it gets further and further in the past, it's actually taken on greater and greater importance. And it's, it's so significant yes. that Armenia takes the lead in this, in this respect. Mm, thank you. And my last question, this year's Global Forum is dedicated to the prevention through education, culture, and uh, museums. How relevant this topic is? <laughs> well, there are museums about uh, genocide and about human rights more generally. Uh, in many, many countries in the world. It's a, it's a wonderful um, addition as well. It's something that's relatively, relatively new. There was always a great museum in, uh, in uh, Jerusalem to the Holocaust. And then in the 1990s, I think, I can't remember when the Holocaust Memorial Museum was established in Washington, but maybe in the late 80s or early 90s. And uh, now there are many more museums uh, dealing with various aspects of, of uh, genocide and more broadly of human rights all over the world. Uh, so that the goal should be that young people, our, first our great goal in human rights is that everybody should have an education. It, it wasn't very long ago that education was almost a privilege and that there were many people who had no right to education. So now we have, we have a right to education. We assume that every child in the world is going to learn to read and write and to to have numeracy skills, but now we also have to insist on the content of education. Education has to be about, about promoting ideas of justice, equality, human rights. This is stated clearly in Article 26 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, and museums, education, they're all a part of that. It's, it's uh, hugely important. And what, in your opinion, could be the subject of the next Global Forum in Europe? Oh, I don't know. I'm not ready for that question. Um, I, I, I don't know that I have a suggestion on that. We'll see. So I hope to see you in Yerevan again, and thank you very much for this I'll interview. I'll certainly be back. Thank you. Thank you.